I just really like those old school 80s, 90s movies where there's like a hardcore feminine hero and I just wanted to do something like that. That's why I call Cena Ventura as the lead. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and the idea behind the demon and all that, did, did that come from you or who, who brought that in? I mean, it was a, it was a discussion we all had. Um, Colin brought a lot to the table. She was um, very evil when I first met her. <laughs> and yeah, maybe you want to talk more about that? It wasn't my idea to be the possessed one, but I came on board with it, obviously. <laughs> um, and how did you prepare for a role like that? Um, I guess the preparation for um, a role like this is more, it's like a lot of um, physicalization for me because I didn't have a ton of dialogue. So it was a lot about um, embodying this person and this character as they get more and more possessed in sort of an animalistic form. So working a lot, I actually worked a little bit with my um, vocal coach in terms of like movement and and how, yeah, just kind of how to embody the energy of what that is. And once you were fully in the makeup and, uh, and oh, actually, did that, that, did that help a lot? Oh yeah, yeah. The, the makeup was one of the most interesting things about the whole process. I would get to set, I think like two hours before everybody else and I would sit in a chair and they would just apply, um, what was it, like prosthetics. And they would just like, first they would glue it, this was so long ago, I can't remember, but they would glue the prosthetics to my face and then they would airbrush and just sit there and paint. And it would, like literally, I'd be there for at least two hours getting this done. So after that happened and I had the contacts in and greased my hair up, I was like, all right, all right, I'm feeling it now. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a place called the Gully Gas. It's been abandoned for about 40 years. Um, yeah, it's an old gas factory. It's actually, um, there's radiation there. We didn't tell Colin about it, but she's still got all her hair. Everything's sweet. Yeah, we actually, uh, no, it's a Pacific radiation that affects. We yesterday. <laughs> yeah, well, sorry, man. No, but actually, it doesn't affect people, it affects cameras. We actually had two cameras that, like, the little pixels were dying. We didn't know what the hell was going on. We thought the place was freaking haunted as well. Yeah, so yeah. Did you have to have like a lot of health and safety on set uh, for a location like that? Like, yeah, this is South Africa, dude. We just do it, bro. <laughs> <laughs> health and safety, that means nothing in our country. So there is actually this thing called the Codus Vaticanus that sits in, in the Vatican City in Rome, and they, they do believe that it's written by God. Um, so that was the initial inception of it. And we thought, well, maybe there is this force field that demonic activity happens the further away you are from it. I mean, that was the exception, but I mean, it's, it's all bullshit. This thing's not based on anything true. <laughs> like, I wish I had an intellectual answer to that, but I don't. Um, we hired guys that we could afford, and they did what they, they could do. And, you know, we had some, some changes and stuff, but... Were you at all hands-on in that particular process? Yeah, we all were. I mean, the only interesting antidote was, you know, I mean, it was mixed in an old church. They turned an old church into a viewing room just for the size of it. Um, this was the first kind of film that they had done. And, um, yeah, just some crazy, weird motherfuckers mixed this movie and did the, did the sound. And they went and recorded stuff um, in the woods by themselves without asking us and just did some really weird stuff. Well, I noticed like uh, every time the demon's in pain, you hear like squealing pigs, and there's like layers of multiple animals. And things like no, that's from my old sex steps. <laughs> <laughs> well, just filming with this like is like uh, a bit of a mission every day. You know, it's hard being an actor with a director like this. I'd like check the camera, do everything myself while he just sat there drinking. So it was tough. Um, oh, was he just doing cocaine? Uh, okay, he was just doing cocaine. Yeah, it's got that like look about it. Um, actually, it was a, I mean, we, we filmed only at night, so from 5 in the afternoon to 5 in the morning. It was freaking freezing. Um, there was a lot of parts I enjoyed. Um, when my so-called little daughter comes out with that face, and I just couldn't get the gun out fast enough. That was funny. We had a good laugh with that. Like, once I got caught on my um, scarf and then shot myself. But, uh, yeah, it didn't look so cool then, but yeah, that was pretty cool. I mean, to be 100% honest, it's not an enjoyable experience. It's, a, it's, it's very difficult to, to do a movie on a low budget, in the cold, um, a lot of problems, you, you're compromising a lot. But when you look back on it and, and you see it on the big screen, I mean, we, we're, we're small guys from Johannesburg and, and here we are in 
second best city in Canada. And, <laughs> <laughs> and it's just a proud moment. So, so this is the best part, is, is seeing the final product, seeing all the hard work um, ending up on this average size screen. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I guess one of the hardest film um, scenes for me to film was the exorcism, just because it was extremely emotional. Um, yeah, it was actually emotionally demanding, but mostly physically demanding. Um, it was really cold that night. Um, we shot in this barn that was probably built in like I don't know, 1850 or something like that, and uh, I was, you know, strapped down and had to scream my guts off for hours. So. That was that was hard, but I think um, the yeah, like it, it was really grueling. But at the same time, it was also incredibly rewarding. Every morning when we would finish, um, it was all it was definitely all worth it. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, we. Um, you know, everybody says you need a name. Uh, I, I didn't really know who Shawnee Vincent was, to be totally honest with you. Um, uh, we we got an agent in, in Hollywood. Uh, she came to us, said we got this girl, Shawnee Vincent. Have a look at what she's done. And um, she's actually Australian, uh, and she was brave enough to come out to South Africa. And um, yeah, so that was pretty much the process. We had, we had actually asked like a number of American actresses, and everybody was really scared, and they wanted like three bodyguards, and we're like, Jesus, man, this is South Africa, it's not that bad. You know, and they were like, nah, it's not safe, this and that. So yeah, it, was, it was actually tough getting somebody to come down. And I mean, we got, a, we got an Australian and a Canadian to come to South Africa. So the Americans were wimps, I don't know what happened there. You know? <laughs>